Excuse me, sorry to bother you. Sorry, I hate to ask, but could I borrow your phone, please? Mine's dead and I'm trying to reach, reach my boyfriend. Do you... Do you understand what I'm saying? My phone is dead? We literally just arrived in Cork. We don't even have our adapters yet, but my boyfriend, Fortune, he had the power bank when we left the hotel. Um, if I could just ring him? Does any of this make sense? You speak English, right? Oh, what does that mean? This is no use. I think you're using sign language, but I wouldn't even be able to tell if you were. Um, can I borrow your phone, please? Okay, um, I give up. Sorry I waste your time. It's not a game, baby. It's a social experiment. What, all this time you heard every word I said? Well... What, what the hell? Am I, am I a joke to you? I have a real problem here. Imagine what it's like for the deaf community. They are facing the challenge of communication every day. Look, I get that the deaf community have a hard, but I can't do anything about that right now. We've had an exhausting day. My boyfriend is nowhere to be found, and you have just wasted my time. I'm sorry, this is just messed up. Do you get some kind of high off this? Okay, let's calm down. I'm sorry. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. I'm sorry my firecracker here is after giving you so much trouble. I'm Andrew, he's Matthias. Well, I have to admit, it was gas watching you from there. Your lips moving, him signing. It was, I could hear a word, it was like a bloody panto. You were saying you were looking for your fella, no? Yeah, like I explained to Matthias, we're here on vacation, our well, it was late, we didn't get into like 11 p.m. We were only going to go out for food, but the kebab place was close to chambers, so we said we'd check it out. I was in the toilet, the music stopped kind of early, about half two, but, at, but anyway, I left and I couldn't find fortune anywhere. Oh, yeah. The party's always over at half two. The party goes on, so the sun comes up. What are you talking about? What well, after party? Well, it's like this. We've been here since Chambers with Rubies. We know exactly what the Chambers dads are like. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's probably more likely your fellas after flecking off with another yoke. What? Uh, no, no, no. Not my, not my fortune. We are strictly exclusive. Three years together and very happy. Thank you very much. They always think they are so special. Well, in any case, we'd like to help you. You know, the bad, bad materials here having it on before. Oh, well, thanks. I really appreciate that. Well, yes, that's us. The best looking, the most welcome pair in the rubber county. Turn back for the stair, we're only down the road. What? N no, no, did you not hear anything I said? I need to find fortune. Fortune, money, wealth, fun. Look. We're only trying to help a stranger out. You look a little stressed. Bothered. Gosh. In need of a cool down. Do you need a massage? Two hands. Or, you know what? <laughs> Take off your clothes. Nashi and Andy will do the rest. Maddie, Andy, you bitches, you ruined my show. Thank you for that. And who are you? Friends with them two? I don't trust anybody who's friends with them two bitches. No, no, I just met them standing here. And to be honest, if I never saw them again, I'd die happy. No, baby, no death for you anytime soon, pretty boy. 
Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm Jacob. My name is Velvet, Miss Violet Velvet. I'm number one rising drag queen in Cork. I, I see it. You are dripping gorgeousness in all the violet and velvet you have on. Do you want to feel it? Do you want to feel the velvet? Go on, feel the velvet. Um, you're very velvety. <laughs> oh, thanks, boo. Us queens need more people like you in this city. Not like that ratty Maddie and Andy. Yuck. You really can't stand them, huh? What is it to stand? A queen trying to make a, make a name for herself in this city and them two bitches at my show insulting me, calling me nonsense. And I'm just, my se it's my second performance ever as a queen. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm not surprised about Ratty Matty and Andy though. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be a bright, bright star. So bright I can blind them. You know, I can see it now. I think I'm going to do Firework by Katy Perry for my next performance. I really wish we had seen your show. I think you would have really enjoyed it. At least Fortin definitely would have. Which reminds me, I still need to find him. Find? Yeah, we were in chambers after getting some food. I was in the bathroom and I came out, the lights were turned on and people already started leaving. I looked around there and outside, no sign of Fortune. Aww. I can't call because my phone's dead. Is that why you were talking to them two shady bitches? Yeah, I'm hanging around here because it might sound kind of silly, but we walked past that chip shop earlier. Fortune said he liked the aroma and we might come back here before our holiday ends. That's not silly, baby. That's your heart giving you direction. Everything is meant to happen for a reason. I didn't know I was meant to be a drag queen until my mother sent the wig to the wrong child and then Miss Violet Velvet was born. Well, wow, that's um, really interesting, but I really need to find Fortune. Could I maybe borrow your phone? You don't need a phone. I don't? Jacob, darling, it's your lucky day. You don't only have the chance to meet the incomparable Miss Violet Velvet, but you also see what the magic can do tonight, today. I'm not following. Get on the floor. Huh? Quickly, boo. This velvet isn't from mopping floors. Give me your hands. Now make your intention clear. I... intention? Say what you want. I'm looking for fortune. We're all looking for that, Boo. You gotta be more clearer. I am looking for my boyfriend. Okay. Fortune, please. Okay, it's getting clearer. What's his favourite colour? He likes purple the most. <laughs> Excellent taste. What was the last thing he ate? We went to the kebab place before Chambers. I had a donner and he had chicken. Okay, it's getting clearer. It's getting clearer. What sort of underwear does he like to wear? Um, is that really necessary? Do you want to find him or not? I guess boxer briefs most. Stop! But... I can see it. It's clear. He's in the city, lost without his boo. Why, are you serious? Where is he? He's in the place where the windows are painted and the brick walls sing. What? He's in the place where the windows are painted and the brick walls sing. And where can I find such a place? Let your heart lead you there, Jacob. Right, okay. Well, can I borrow your phone anyway? Why do you still need a phone? So I can... What's wrong with you ordinary people? I'm trying to share my divine gift with you, uh, free of charge, and you aren't even grateful. Listen, Violet. It's Miss Velvet to you. Okay, Miss Velvet. I'm just a tourist here. Even if I believed what you're saying, I wouldn't even know where to look. See, that's your problem. You ain't a believer. Okay. Can I borrow your phone, please? No, Ingrid. Use your mind's eye. Miss Velvet! Bye, Felicia! <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, um, are you okay? I'm fine. You don't look fine to me. What are you, a psychotherapist? No, I'm a game developer. Sorry if I offended you. No, I'm sorry. 
I just need this night, this whole weekend to be over and this is going to get me there. So thanks for your concern. I'll be off. I don't think that's a good idea. What are you talking about? You don't even know me. You know nothing about me. That's true, but in my little experience, someone going out to get a box of cans at 3 a.m. on a Saturday night is trying to repress feelings that will only kick in when the hangover wears off. What's your name? I didn't catch it earlier. Jacob, and you? Aaron. Jacob, tell me, is there anything so wildly wrong with wanting to just shut my brain and my mind off for one good Saturday night? Don't talk to me about feelings. I know all about feelings. Don't you understand? I've been here before. And when the sun comes up, I'll still be the lesbian that just got dumped. So please, I beg you, just let me have this one night where it can be Erin, the one whose feelings leave her body. That's all I want. I'm sorry to hear about your breakup. <laughs> what are you sorry for? It's not your fault. I'm a prissy little princess. What do you mean? That's what she said when she, my ash, just before she dumped me. She said even my name would fit into a Disney princess lineup. I think Karen's a beautiful name. I think that was her point. Well, at least not Jacob. People are always asking me, where's Esau? Nobody asks you that. You're right, but you get the point. What is your name now? There's more to you than that. I don't think it was really about the name. It was clear from the start that we were different. But there was chemistry. I just thought, you know, opposites attract and all that. I didn't even drink beer bef when I started dating her. I was just trying to impress her friends, be the girlfriend she wanted. Well, maybe that's your problem. You Shouldn't change who you are for someone else. Great. Then I'll just be alone. No, you just haven't met the right person. Do you believe in that? In what? The right person. Mr. Right, Miss Right, Soulmate, True Love, that kind of stuff. Um, I was born in a small town. I mean, a really, really tiny town. People dated distant cousins, family friends, parents arranged marriages. Finding something outside of those circumstances never even crossed my mind. Until um, I realized I was different. The only thing I had hoped for was to take my secret to the grave with me. When my father found out and kicked me out, I took the evening bus into the city. I had nowhere to go, just wandering around at night, and that's when I met the love of my life, Fortune. That's so beautiful. So I don't know if soulmates are real or not, Aaron, but some people can come pretty damn close. Yeah, for a minute there I was thinking, what's the point? But I do believe, I believe in what you and Fortune have. Hi, Erin. I'm glad I bumped into you. Happy to help. So, what are you doing out here by yourself? Where's Fortune? That's the million dollar question. It's our first night in the city. We were in chambers and I went to the bathroom just before the lights came on. I went out of the bathroom and Fortune was nowhere to be found. Oh my god, that's awful. And I can't call him because my phone is dead, so if it isn't too much to ask. Could I borrow your phone, please? Oh, oh, Jacob, I'd gladly lend you my mobile if I had it, but I just rushed out of the house and grabbed some change and my keys. Oh, well, thanks anyway. But look, you just said you got back, you got to the city this evening. Where are you staying? In a B&B, &B, about 15 minutes taxi ride away from here. But maybe Fortune thought he missed you and went back in a taxi himself? You wouldn't have got a taxi back by himself, Aaron. You see, Fortune and I are different, yet we complement each other. He likes to bake, I do the cleaning, he does the art, I make the game. 
He's the one who remembers to bring a power bank with him on vacation, and I'm the one who holds on to the keys to B&B because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes he can lose all sense of direction. Are you saying? He's a, he's a great guy, but he can get distracted easily. Of course, of course. Sorry I can't be of more help. No, no problem, you are by far the most pleasant person I've spoken to since getting here. What do you mean? Well, first I met a sign language user who made a fool of me by pretending he was deaf. Then he and his boyfriend tried to lure me back to their place. And then I met a drag queen undiscovered psychic who would rather give me a reading than lend me her phone. What? You said a drag queen gave you a psychic reading? Yeah, it's so silly, I don't even want to repeat it. No, go on, I'm curious. She said I'll find fortune somewhere with painted windows and music on the walls, something like that. Ridiculous, isn't it? Wow, that's something. So crazy, almost as crazy as finding love on your first night of homelessness. What are you saying? But like, think about it, right? There's probably one in a million chances she's right, right? And your relationship with fortune is proof that one in a million does occur. So why not go for it? What have you got to lose? I can't believe you're taking this seriously. Even if I was to buy into this, I wouldn't know where to start with decoding this riddle. Well, Mr. Loverboy, you are in luck. Just so happened to be in the company of a book editor. I see this foreshadowing all the time with amateur writers. So, give me the reading again. Um, you will find fortune in a place where the windows are painted and the brick wall sing, were mm. the exact words, I believe. Right. Well, painted windows, that has to be referring to a church. A church? Yeah, think about it. What other place would you find similar window paintings? Anywhere else, anywhere in the world that you'd go to? But what would Fortune be doing in a church? I didn't say he was in the church. That's just the first part. The singing walls, that's a bit trickier. I mean, there's always people singing and praising in churches. But if it was just that, what would be the need for the second half? Erin, seriously, you don't shh, have to. Shh. I'm thinking out loud. Painted windows and brick walls sing. It has to be a church. But which one? We've St. Francis, St. Augustine, St. Finbars. Oh my gosh! It's the bell towers. The Shandon bell towers on St. Anne's church. So you're saying Fortin's in a church? Not just any church. The Shandon Bells is practically a Cork landmark. And I think there's a trans event happening there soon. Well, wait a minute. It's not soon, it's tonight. Well, technically last night, but yeah. Uh, that makes even less sense than Fortin going to a church. Why would he randomly go from Chambers to a trans event? Well, I can't answer that, but I can take you there just to be sure. Yeah, sure. I'm Erin, this is Jacob. Hi. Hi, I'm Sapphire. Can I help you with anything? Yeah, is, is there a trans event down here tonight? Yeah, you missed the party. We had a midnight fundraiser for the inaugural Cork Trans Ball. Wow, a midnight fundraiser. That sounds like a party, all right. When is the next one? <laughs> it was an off-the-cuff idea. We didn't even know if it would work. But the turnout completely blew our expectations. We had fire starters, stilt walkers, acrobats, interpretive dance. It just went on and on. I should be home in bed by now, but look, I'm only just cleaning up here. Your event sounds amazing. By any chance, were there any non-trans people present? Yeah, well, of course. It is a fundraiser after all. We had support from all communities, both LGBT people and cis allies. Would you remember seeing a guy about five foot ten, short brown hair? No, sorry. Well, maybe they were here. It was a very busy night. Thanks. Well, I have to go now. Again, it's been a long night. Here's my card if you're interested in taking part in any future events. Thanks so much. I'll be in touch. I hope you find who or what you're looking for. I...
don't know an answer exactly to get. I guess something would have been better than nothing. Not once. Nothing out of the ordinary. I am um, Jacob Fortune, where have you been? Look, looking for you, what are you doing out here? You have the keys, silly. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. I I have the key. Thank God. Listen. Babe, if you ever felt like you were transgender, you would tell me, right? Yeah. Okay, good, because I'll always love you for who you are, okay? No matter what. Thanks. <laughs>